Hi, my name is Jason and I'm an application engineer here at 3M. Today we're going to be talking to you about abrasives used during the paint finishing process, also known as the cut and buff process or the polishing process. Before we get started, I just want to cover a couple of things. First is we want to make sure if we're using sanding products or polishing products that we're going to be wearing a respirator. We also want to make sure we're wearing nitro gloves and safety glasses. The other thing I want to mention is this video is intended for professional use. So by you technicians actually out there in the body shops doing collision work. Let's get started. When we're talking about abrasives in the paint finishing process, we can kind of break them down into two categories. We have our actual sandpapers, and then we have our liquid abrasives, which are gonna be our compounds, polishes, swirl removers, things like that. Let's look at paper first. When it comes to papers, there's a lot of different options out there, and a lot of people can get lost in all the variety. There's gonna be sandpaper that's used with blocks, and then there's sandpaper that's used with DAs. First, let's cover the sandpaper that's typically used with blocks. With blocking paper, there's a few different options. There's a wet or dry type paper, which is really, really common. And then there's a less common paper known as a flexible abrasive. As you can see, a flexible abrasive can really move around the contours of the body of the car, body lines, convex areas, so bumpers, things like that. This is a really nice tool to have. All of these papers should be used in conjunction with a sanding block. We never want to sand by hand because as we push with our fingers, we can leave little grooves in the panel and once we do our final polish, they'll show up as little waves and we'll have to go back and redo the whole process over again. So make sure you're always using a block. When you're looking at the blocks, there's soft blocks that have a lot of flex to them. Um, again, in conjunction with a flexible abrasive, this is really good for getting around body lines and curves. And then there's gonna be more rigid blocks. These don't flex near as much. These are excellent choices for larger flat areas that we want really, really smooth. So be sure to choose the block that's gonna work best for the application you're using. There's also sanding pads. Uh, these are very similar to a block, still very flexible. These are used most of the time with wet or dry paper because they hold a little bit of water, which helps in the sanding process. So again, be sure you're using the proper block for the sandpaper and the application that you're using. Next, let's talk about abrasives for a dual action sander or a DA. So DAs have become very commonplace in the polishing process. Years ago, everything used to be done by hand with blocks and wet or dry paper, but DA sanders and the paper that goes on them has advanced a lot and they can now be used through the entire paint finishing process and most times we don't have to do anything by hand. So let's take a look at the different types of paper. The first type is going to be a clean sanding disc and what I mean by that is there's usually perforations in the disc that go in conjunction with a vacuum type sanding system so any of the sanding dust that we're creating is immediately sucked away from the panel and isn't getting out into the air. The next sanding disc is very similar to the last one, but this one doesn't have any perforations. This can be used with any type of DA. It can also be used on your clean sanding style DAs, but just note this isn't gonna remove any sanding dust because we don't have those perforations. But this is a very acceptable choice to use with any style DA for removing any of the imperfections in the panel. The third type of abrasive we can use with a dual action sander is a foam back disc. Uh, it feels very spongy. You can see how soft it is. These are designed to be used damp. So typically we're gonna spray a little bit of water on this and we're gonna use that to sand the panel. Uh, the little bit of water helps keep the dust down. We get a very nice clean sanding profile. But one thing to keep in mind, these are designed more to remove texture, orange peel or sand scratches they're not really designed to remove hard defects like a dirt nib or maybe a hair that got clear coated over in the panel. Because they're so flexible, if we try to sand over a hard dirt nib, 
This is gonna conform around that dirt nib and we might end up leaving a high spot if we're not careful. So anytime we're removing defects, you're better off going with a thinner film-based sandpaper and make sure we're using a hard pad on our DA. We do not want to use an interface pad when removing defects. Again, because of that sponginess, just like our foam backed pad, it could conform over the top of those little imperfections and leave little high spots. So again, this is gonna be used when we're removing sand scratches or orange peel, along with our foam backed sanding pads. The next type of abrasive we're gonna talk about is liquid abrasives. So these are gonna come in the forms of polishes, compounds, swirl removers, different things like that. A lot of people don't realize that these are actually abrasive. So anytime I'm looking at a liquid abrasive, we have two components. We have the liquid itself, and then whatever backing pad or buffing pad or polishing pad that we're using in conjunction with that. The type of pad is going to change how abrasive the liquid is that we're using on top of it. For example, when we're compounding, with most systems you have a choice of a wool pad or a foam pad, and there's many different kinds of wool pad. Uh, depending on the type of wool, we're going to cut faster or slower, and then foam is going to cut a little bit slower than wool, so it'll be a little bit more forgiving if we're working around hard body lines or door edges where we have to be really conscious of burning through. But the other thing to keep in mind, especially with a rotary buffer, is this is gonna generate more heat. So we wanna use less passes or cover a slightly larger area and constantly feel the panel to make sure we're not getting it too hot, which can also result in ruining the paint and having to do a respray. So be conscious of that. With our system, we try to keep it very simple. Typically, the type of pad you're using is gonna match the lid on the bottle that's gonna hold the liquid abrasive in it. So if we were gonna use this polishing pad, we know that this is gonna be designed to go with one of these types of liquid compounds or polishes. If we switch to a wool pad, we know a wool pad is not gonna be compatible with either of these. We need to make sure we're using a compound with the white lid on it. The last abrasive I'm gonna talk about is on the um, ultra fine side. With the 3M system, it's usually designated with a, a blue top. This isn't gonna be used on every panel. It's typically only on darker vehicles. And it's just to remove the final swirl marks that may be left behind from the polishing process using our gray polishing pads and the black topped polishes. Um, so just an ultra fine abrasive. It's not gonna get near as hot as the other ones. This isn't designed to cut. It's just designed to remove those final little swirl marks. The last thing I'm gonna mention with abrasives is the use of denibbing tools. There's denib files. Some people use razor blades. Um, here I have the Festool blade, which is a really phenomenal tool. These can be used to eliminate those high spots or dirt nibs. Um, essentially, you can skip maybe a film and be able to go right to a more forgiving Trizac foam type pad um, because this will knock down that high spot and we don't have to worry about using a, foam, a firm pad on our DA to level that down. I see these misused a lot, so I'm just gonna give you a few little tips and tricks and explain how this tool works. So the first thing you'll notice is this has a string on it. We always wanna keep that string on the tool. It's there for a very specific purpose, and that purpose is to hold our tool at the right pitch. We don't wanna use this like a razor blade, which is what I see most common. So this panel has quite a few dirt nibs in it. If we were using a razor blade, we would hold this up vertical and kind of scratch the top of that dirt nib down until it's flush. The way we want to use this is we want to put the string side down on the panel. We'll set it down nice and flat. We don't need to put a lot of pressure, just enough to hold it against the panel. Again, that string is holding it at the right pitch to make a nice clean cut. Anywhere there's not a nib, this moves nice and smoothly across. As soon as we come in contact with a nib, we can feel it catch. We just want to move back and forth until that starts to move really smooth. Now that nib is totally flattened out and we can move right to a, 
a finishing film to finish our sanding profile, knock out the rest of our orange peel and get that to where we want it. Um, I'll demonstrate one more time on a larger dirt nib. Here's a really big one up in this corner. Um, this one would be tough to get out with finishing film. We could sand it by hand using a block and really focus the sandpaper on that little spot, but there's a chance that we could groove in around that dirt nib. So this is ideal for a tool like this. So just like before, we're gonna set it on the panel with that string side down. Again, that's holding it at the right pitch. And we're gonna slide it across the panel until we come into contact with that nib. There we pop the top of it off and I'll keep moving across until I don't feel any more drag. Now that's nice and smooth and flat. And again, we can move right onto our finishing film or our Trizac type sanding disc and continue the polishing process. So this is a big time saver um, and it can really help take care of some of those larger nibs without leaving a high spot at the end. So to summarize, there's a lot of options to choose from when it comes to abrasives in the paint finishing process. Remember, if you're sanding by hand with a flexible abrasive or a paper, be sure to use a block. Uh, we also have blocks for the round discs, so you don't need to buy straight square paper if you don't want to. Um, but again, make sure you're using a block. We have our foam back type pads like Trizac, which is gonna be great for removing sand scratches but don't use that for dirt nibs. Again, we wanna make sure we're using a hard block or something like the Festool blade. And then lastly is our liquid compounds and polishes and our pads that go with them. Be sure to always match the pad to the lid on the bottle. Be sure to check online for our SOPs so anytime there's a change, you can stay up to date on what our recommendations are. Thank you for watching our video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. For any other questions or additional SOP information, be sure to check us out at 3M Collision Repair Academy. We left a link to that in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.